This is a pair of All Saints pants that was a little bit of a weird one. All Saints Spitalfields is like a higher end mall brand. I like finding it quite a bit. The logo is weird. It's this demonic, uh, it looks like a doom thing, like a rabbit or a goat or something. Typically pretty solid. This sold for 22 bucks, and then the buyers pay shipping on top of that. This had like steel threading or something in it, but it got wrinkled up. And because there was so much metal content in the fabric, the wrinkles would not come out. And I think they probably need to be ironed. I just s explained this in the listing and someone still bought it for 22. This is a Shell gas station jumpsuit. And I don't remember what uh, keywords I used for this, but it was covered in grease stains and flaws. Work right benchmark is the brand. And a lot of fading issues, etc. 36 bucks, which is pretty good. And I got this at the bins, so it was pretty cheap. My sales have been dreadfully slow. I'll talk about that at the end of the video if you're curious. This is a Lucky Brand t-shirt and it's in the Lucky Brand Venice Burnout line, which is my favorite subline of Lucky Brand to sell. It seems to have the highest demand. <clears throat> and everything that I've found from Venice Burnout has flipped within a few days of listing it. And this even had stains on it and 10 bucks. Another one that I got at the bins. This is a t-shirt for Liquid Death. It's a brand of water that is marketed to look like malt liquor cans. This pair of Jose Bank linen shorts was in a recent haul video. Got this from a retail Goodwill for six bucks. If memory serves, flipped for 20. Normally don't source, or I normally don't source this brand unless it's something like this or unless it's a two-piece suit that I can get for really cheap. This is another linen piece from a so-so brand, J. Crew. A lot of people love J. Crew. I like J. Crew, but you have to be a little careful with it. Not every category within J. Crew sells. That's the vintage tag, the guy with the big or, the green square, and it's 100% linen. And I think it was unstructured or half-lined, semi-structured maybe. And this kind of thing is gonna become more and more popular moving into summer. If you can find 100% linen blazers, especially the unstructured kind, and that's where they don't have paneling inside the structure, uh, inside the structure, inside the shoulders, so that it hangs like a shirt. Uh, those are gonna be really desirable, especially if they're two button and in a decent enough brand like J. Crew. I don't remember where I got this. This was a semi-success. This was in a Poshmark arbitrage haul that I got over a year ago, probably a year and a half ago now, before the channel kind of blew up, I was running this experiment in the midst of the lockdowns, trying to source stuff off of Poshmark to flip back on Poshmark and eBay, which I found some success with, but I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew, and I don't do it anymore. This finally did sell for 25 bucks, which is pretty good. Vince is a another higher-end mid-tier brand. I got this at the bins, would not have picked it up if I hadn't found it at the bins. It's a Tommy Bahama 100% linen, linen, silk shirt, not linen, 100% silk shirt. It has some fading on the collar. A lot of people disagree with me on this, but a lot of people agree with me that Tommy Bahama, even the silk shirts are a little bit overrated. I have trouble flipping them for good money. And if I find them for like seven, eight, certainly 10 or 12 or 15 bucks at a thrift store, <clears throat> I typically pass on it. I even typically pass on it at this point if it has the big embroidered graphics on the back. And each of those will have its own sales velocity and value that you can look up. Some of them will probably be worth it, but just because you see Tommy Bahama and something eye-catching doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna sell quickly. This one makes me sad. I used to love finding Nike Pro Combat because I could get it for like four or five bucks at retail thrifts and flip it for 25 all day long, as they say on YouTube. But the sell-through has fallen off fairly dramatically and Nike Pro, Nike Pro Combat, I think is still good to pick up at the bins to be a broken record or for really cheap. Cheap to me would be like three bucks or less, ideally two or less, and really ideally like a buck. If you can get this at dollar day, I would say pick it up, Nike Pro Combat or Nike Pro. But if you find this for five, I would have some reservations about it, unless it's something really weird eye-catching. This is a 
corduroy-ish. I think it was corduroy. It was this really cheap polyester twill. No, it wasn't. It was cotton. It felt cheap. It just felt cheap. And it was a biker thing and biker things are popular. It did take a long time to sell, but it did sell for 20 bucks. And this was way long ago, sat around for a long time. I think I got this at the bag sale, the storied legendary bag sale of yore, for those of you who have watched the channel for a long time. Another 100% linen piece from a so-so brand. I think it's a so-so brand, Sanctuary, it's a women's brand. My brand knowledge with women's is nowhere near as strong as with men's, so that could be wrong. Got it at the bins, flipped it for 15 bucks. I love to do that. Pair of Prana shorts. I really, really love both men's and women's Prana bottoms, pants and shorts. And these shorts are going to be really hot sellers in spring and summer. Got 25 bucks for them, which is a great price. I think I got these at a Goodwill. Don't remember how much I paid for them. This one I picked up at the bins just on a whim, just in case it was worth something. Iron Mag Labs. Ended up being something that was in demand. It's a supplement company. Someone paid me 20 bucks for the t-shirt. And I'm skipping over a few kind of less interesting ones. This is a baby K-Tan Catan. And uh, I don't think that I've mentioned this on the channel before, but when I find these baby slings at the bins, they typically sell fairly reliably. Like the, um, the, the breastfeeding modesty things, shawls, and the baby slings, baby carriers. Uh, th they've always sold really consistently well for me. This sold on Poshmark, used for 15 bucks. Over to eBay, this Vans t-shirt that had a lot of flaws flipped for 13 bucks. And I've had a couple people ask me how I managed to make profit off of a sale like this when you factor in the eBay fees and the shipping and all of that, the cost of goods. And it's because I get this stuff from the bins for so cheap that it's functionally free. Like I'm getting this stuff for less than a buck. So if you can't do that, and if you're not willing to put in the work to realize probably like $5 net off of a sale like this, then don't do it. But I don't mind it. I'm happy to do it, especially something like Vans that I know if I can price it around 15 bucks is going to have a really big market for it. If I source this for five bucks, I absolutely would not price it at 13. If you don't have your sea legs when it comes to just eyeballing uh, your projected net on sales like this, there are a couple of, I know there's at least one, there's probably more than one. There is an eBay fee calculator that you can go to and punch in all of your stats on your store, your cost of goods, your shipping costs, whether or not you're doing free shipping or charging for shipping, and it'll output an estimate of uh, your net. So that's a good thing to play around with to get a sense for what the thresholds are. Another Tommy Bahama piece. I think I got this for one dollar. Twenty-seven bucks. It's silk pants. Kind of a corduroy. And uh, I don't know. I took a shot on it because it was cheap and paid off. Twenty-seven bucks. These the the ass brands that I talk about. I'm happy to sell if they have like an okay demand for them and if I can get them for these kinds of prices of like a buck or less. At that point, who really cares? If this was sitting on the rack for seven bucks, I wouldn't have touched it. These were at the bins, again, 35 bucks. I thought they were the same size. One of them ended up being a crop leg, this green pair, and then the tan pair was long-legged. Thankfully, it sold really quickly for 35 a ballast point brewing work shirt, Dickies short sleeve. Um, this is a local brewery that's really popular. It's really popular locally and elsewhere as well. And the clothing has quite a bit of demand for it. I've done great with ballast point. I think ballast point probably is the strongest beer related clothing brand that I have sold. It's my personal favorite. You're not going to believe this, but I sourced this one at the bins. So it was really, really cheap and flipped it for 18 and a half. Land's End is not like a phenomenal brand. It's kind of a lower tier LL Bean, 
but the demand is healthy enough that again if i can source it for those rock bottom prices i'm happy to list it and flip it because it sells reasonably well and of course like every brand this brand fractionates out by category so if you if you don't have a sense for those categories on a brand by brand basis check out the menswear manifesto it's a free pay what you want product there's a link to it in the description someone snapped this up within an hour of it being listed i don't think that that fading was factory fading i think that is genuine wear and tear and it still flipped for 18 bucks got really lucky and got these for free i priced them up too much i think i had them priced at like 75 which was stupid and i dropped the price down to 40 or 50 got an offer for 35 and just took it and i put these in a bubble mailer and then shipped them out in the uh cardboard flat rate which is totally fine this one i also got for free it was sitting on the ground at a flea market along with a bunch of like broken light bulbs and other trash and it had flaws but i knew that this pattern would sell it i don't know that much about newport blue as a brand but it is definitely vintage and it definitely fits the aesthetic that people like or you know people of a certain age persuasion like a magic the gathering book flipped for 33 bucks this was in a recent video this is the second time that i flipped this specific book and look at all the condition issues still flips really well um so if you find stuff like this, look it up, even if you don't sell books, maybe. A uh, Ming Wong, knit, open front cardigan. It had one clasp closure up here at the collar. Flip for 50 bucks. Got this for, I think it was eight bucks at a Goodwill. And happy with 50. I think I could have maybe juiced another 20 out of it, but oh well. Really good women's upscale brand. Had those metal studs on it. This is a pair of plus size stretch denim women's jeans that I got at the bins and flip for 23. I don't think the brand is that great, but kind of like really nice fabric, big sizes, bigger sizes can offset uh, the assness of the brand of the piece at times. One of the pairs of the double RL jeans, salvage jeans flip for 89 bucks. These were 15. So totally happy with those margins. Let me show you the tag. Source this at the same Goodwill where I got the uh, Ming Wong. This one actually says double RL on it, but you will find that logo. If you see that logo, pick it up. It's really spendy stuff, especially the jeans. I don't remember where or why I got this. It's a silk necktie. I don't really sell neckties, but this flipped for 27. It might have been a Ben's pickup. I don't know. It had some wear on it. I thought it was like a gorgeous uh, print. It's made in France. 27. This is called a bib, bib shorts, bib shorts jersey or overalls or something. It's a cycling one piece jersey. Don't say onesie, that's a Vero term. And I've had great luck selling cycling clothing generally, and especially these bib jerseys with the padded seats. A pair of navy canali trousers. 34. I'm going to skip over a few. This is a Peter Millar new with tags polo shirt. Flipped for 45 bucks. Flipped really quick. Uh, don't be scared off of selling golf clothing if it has golf brands or golf courses embroidered somewhere on it um peter millar kind of an uneven brand but the summer comfort especially the summer comfort polos i don't know if they make anything else summer comfort if they do pick it up polo shirts are a no-brainer this i sourced for seven bucks it is a kind of waffle knit textured long sleeve shirt i managed to find yeah it's an uproar carbon waffle shirt i looked up the style code on the tag and it gave me those keywords flip for 36. cool is you know i think we all know good brand if you don't know that cool is a good brand that's what the logo looks like and i pick up everything that i find from cool i think i got really lucky and sourced this at the bin so this cost me next to nothing it flipped for 75 i had it listed for probably 125 i think uh rare y2k era radiohead t-shirt 
this is why you see so many of like the hype beast types at the bins is because stuff like this often ends up there because it has condition issues the really valuable vintage shirts here is a video game that i sourced for i think it was two bucks one buck two bucks flip for 45 pair of men's tactical cargo shorts from vertex flip for 30. i found another pair of these that was new with the tags these are new without tags but i listed them as used because you want to under promise over deliver on ebay i'm a big believer in that and i don't really know that much about the brand i haven't dug into it too much that's the logo right there but both of those sold for really good money so that might be a good one first edition firestarter uh, hardcover had condition issues flip for 21.50 i would have sourced this for one or two dollars and book ship out media mail so Shipping is really cheap. Shipping was probably under $4 for this. My sales have been really sluggish for probably a couple weeks. And obviously I'm still doing okay. I'm still selling stuff, but especially the past four days, I've only made a handful of sales on both platforms. It's been really like infuriatingly slow. And this is the case for a lot of people. At least I get that impression kind of snooping around YouTube and talking to other people I know who resell. Um, and every time this happens, people kind of lapse into this, the sky is falling mentality. And I'm not saying that the sky is not falling, but my personal perspective is that the sky is always in a process of just slowly descending on us. And when it goes in fits and starts, when something changes abruptly, we notice it. Uh, and that might sound doom and gloom, but it, that's just to say that things are always changing, especially with the economy and especially with these platforms where sales are governed by forces that are pretty much completely beyond our control. Like they tinker with the algorithm, things change around, buyer behavior can't be predicted. You know, there's a reason these companies hire multi-million dollar consultancies to try to figure out predictive consumer trends so they can get ahead of these things to make the money because nobody can predict what people will buy when. If this becomes a permanent state of affairs, if we cut to three months, four months, five months from now, and everybody's sales are still dramatically depressed, then it might be some real cause for concern. And not that this isn't a big deal because these crunches hurt in the short term always. Every time these slowdowns have happened, people always always speculate about why it's not easy to tell what speculation is accurate and what isn't and you never actually get an answer for why sales behave the way that they do and people have strongly held convictions about why these ups and downs occur people say uh, people, people are doing this or that, it's back to school, so people are buying, or it's post Christmas, so people are behaving in XYZ way, or the reselling platforms themselves are to blame because they tinkered with the algorithm in a specific way, or they're trying to juice us for money, or like people are blaming inflation now, and all of these are probably true, in, in a piecemeal way, but uh, all of the times there have been these slumps, there's never been one to my memory where we look back on it, A, at all, where anybody actually does their diligence and goes back and tries to figure out what happened exactly, or B, like, can furnish some kind of a concrete answer for why. My personal opinion is that we don't know why. We're never gonna really fully know why. This is just the nature of the beast. The market is erratic. Uh, the, the market is crazy. I mean, it's just insane. But there are things that you can do, like you can play around with the promoted listings. You can kind of game the system a little bit where you end stuff and sell similar. You can fluctuate the pricing across all of your listings by a buck, like raise it a buck or lower it a buck. You can try cross-listing elsewhere, you you know, and there's like tricks, tips, tricks, hacks for Poshmark for each one of these reselling platforms that are worth knowing. And it's not like those things don't work. But really like the solution is just keep going, is just keep working. Because in my experience, we've always come out of it. And like I said, like 
if we don't come out of it, then it'll be bad news if the sky is in fact descending upon us and crushing us. Um, then we'll have to adapt and figure it out, but I would say like don't panic and don't feel like you're a bad reseller and don't pull your hair out. Just do what you can and, and work intelligently and try to try to follow the dictates of these best practices on these reselling platforms, but also like don't get overly obsessed with it or, or don't get lost in this haze of like soothsaying and wizardry of trying to put a pin exactly in the causal factor, the one or two things that are causing the earth to shake. Because when I think about it, when I think about the economy and these reselling platforms over the long scope, like, yes, thing, there is a crunch, things are getting more constricted and difficult, that's always been the case. But also, can I envision a future where Americans don't love buying things on the internet? Nope. So I also don't want to be these guys who, who's just like, if you can't make money, you're not working hard enough, there's always an opportunity, always, always an opportunity, no whining, no complaining, uh, like you're just not hustling hard enough. Like bad things do happen, really bad things might eventually happen, but I would say like don't live in that world prematurely until you have to. Like just keep working and it will probably turn around. And I say that as someone who has succumbed to a lot of these kind of panics. So my big hack, my big piece of advice is don't freak out and do as much as you can, as intelligently and as diligently as you can, and keep putting stuff up for sale, and hope for the best. And if the best doesn't happen, if we're uh, stuck in this trench forever, then yeah, we're gonna have to go put on one of those shell uh, coveralls and get to work at a gas station. But until such time, I'm gonna keep reselling and not worry about it too much. Another factor in my personal slow sales is that I have pivoted away a little bit from the sell-through model. In this video I kept saying again and again I got this at the bins, I got this for a buck, I got this for really cheap, and this has been kind of my sourcing model lately just because I found a number of opportunities around town to get stuff for really cheap and that makes a lot of sense to do. And this goes back to an old saw topic on this channel of the fast nickel, the slow dime business model debate or culture war and reselling. So I have favored the slow dime or the slower dime over the quicker nickel recently. I think my sales have reflected that. I think since I'm not ponying up a little bit more money on the sourcing end to get the more in demand items that flip more quickly for a little bit more money. I'm more reliant on the slower items that sell for less money that are trickling in, that are selling, but in the short term, I think sourcing this way does have its own risks associated with it. Once in a while you find one of the really, really good items. But for the most part, it's stuff like the Land's End shirt, it's stuff like a Domino's polo or something like, stuff that kind of requires a whole lot of quantity to compensate for the quality. So to generate the same amount of income, you need more items to have been listed. And as a sole operator, as someone who has pretty limited time and energy to list, because I'm listing the lower dollar stuff and the lower demand stuff, I think that I'm enjoying slower sales. And you saw like the cool shirt flipped quickly. Um, a few of these items that I did, or like the Jose Bank linen shorts, or the Ming Wong, those were, I know, shorter timeline items that sell for more money. So maybe, maybe that is a fix. And if you want guidance on how to do that, I refer you to every other video that I've ever made. That's kind of just been my MO for a long time now with clothing and also the menswear manifesto will help. So I think I'm going to mix it up a little bit more, so. Thanks for watching, hope it helps.